Mayor Frazier, will you please start the meeting? Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, tonight's meeting of the Township of North Dundas's Council. This is a regular meeting, and this being Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, and the meeting will be streamed live on YouTube. We call the meeting to order. Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that the meeting of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of North Dundas be hereby called to order at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. Roll call. Council Mayor Tony Fraser here. Deputy Mayor Alan Armstrong. Here. Councillor Gary Annable. Here. Councillor Tyler Hoy. Here. And Councillor John Thompson. Here. Staff, CAO Angela Rutley. Here. Director of Planning, Building and Enforcement, Calvin Pohl. Here. Director of Recreation and Culture, Megan Mearberg. Here. Fire Liaison Officer, Chief Mike Gruich. Here. Facilities Manager, Tom Decker. Here. Recreation Coordinator, Brandon Cousino. Here. Deputy Clerk, Nancy Johnson. Here. And Clerk, Joanne McCaslin. Here. Thank you very much. Adoption of the agenda. Madam Clerk, any amendments, changes to the agenda? Um, hello, Mr. Mayor, through you, the agenda has been amended uh, to include an item under uh, action requests, recreation and culture. Uh, it's to do with the uh, Winchester Arena chiller. So that will appear on your agenda as 8F4. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Hoy, second by Councillor Annabelle, that Council approve the agenda as amended addition Recreation Culture Action Requests, 8F4, Winchester Arena Chiller. All those in favor? Carried. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? Seeing none. Adoption of the minutes. Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by Councillor Annabel, that the minutes of the meeting of the Council of the Township of North Dundas held May 12, 2021, be adopted as presented. All those in favor? Carried. There are no delegations, and we'll jump uh, right down to action requests, and we'll start the planning building enforcement. Mr. Pohl. Good evening, Mayor Frazier and members of council. Uh, first item we have before us this evening is a zoning amendment request. Uh, for 2 Morewood Mill Street in Morewood. The intent is to amend the former Township of Winchester bylaw, the zoning bylaw, to allow for a small scale woodworking shop and cabinetry operation uh, within an existing building. Uh, this building was formerly a church, uh, has been used as a workshop for several years now, and they're looking to legalize it for insurance purposes. Uh, to it's basically been a hobby for him in this shop and he wants to uh, bring it forward as a, a formal woodworking shop in there so he's requested an amendment to recognize its current use so it would rezone the property from institutional as the former church to a light industrial uh, exception zone uh, the exception zone would limit the uses on the property and to make sure we can deal with any issues that may come forward with regard to neighbors and things like that as we go forward through the public meeting process uh, he has no intent to have employees. This would be a self-employed, uh, it's basically his hobby. Um, there he sells things from too also. So that would be included with the amendment as a, a permitted use. So there's a small scale operation and he's looking to rezone this property. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Any questions, comments for Mr. Paul? Moved by Councillor Hoy, second by Councillor Thompson. The council hereby accepts the rezoning application as complete from Martin Reichert and direct that the public meeting be held on June 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Pohl. 
So the second item we have before council is a site specific amendment from Mark Brisson. He's purchased the La Fortune subdivision, the last uh, part of it to the phase five, I guess you'd call it. Uh, it's two blocks that he's looking to use part lot control to split it up. Uh, these lots were designed in the initial subdivision. All the engineering was prepared for it. Um, the drainage is all in place now. And now he's looking forward uh, to rezoning it from rural to a state residential, which is the identical zone for the subdivision to the north. Uh, that zone would be repeated on these two blocks. So he's looking for this to move forward to a public meeting, which will be the next uh, meeting of council in on June 22nd at 6.30 is a proposal. Questions, comments from Mr. Pohl? Moved by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Annabel, that Council hereby accepts the rezoning application as complete from Mark Riso on behalf of Falcon Home Construction and direct that the public meeting be held on June 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. Move on to Recreation and Culture, Ms. Mirberg. Evening Council. The Mountain Inn District Lions Club would like to donate some items to our South Mountain Park Pavilion, which was recently renamed the Rick Covey Memorial Park. Uh, they'd like to donate a park bench, two picnic tables, a sign and flowers for the newly constructed pavilion. The Mountain Inn District Lions Club are seeking council's acceptance of these donations, as well as approval for them to rename the pavilion the Lions Club Pavilion. Should council approve, the Lions will design and purchase a sign, which will be approved by myself and will be hung on the gable end of the pavilion. The proposed sign is to be similar in design to the one that is in the 100 Club Park in Winchester, which is also called the uh, Lions Club Pavilion. So it's recommended that council accept the donation of furnishings and flowers from the Mountain District Lions Club and authorize and approve the pavilion to be renamed the Lions Club Pavilion and authorize staff to work with the Mountain and District Lions Club to design and erect new signage for the pavilion. Thank you, Ms. Mirberg. Questions, comments from members of council? Um, yes, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say that I think it's it's great to see uh, yet another project done by uh, Alliance Group. We've had great work from Chesterville, Winchester, and Mountain, and, and this just continues. And uh, the, the park itself looks beautiful. It's been great work done there, and uh, and this will just be a nice adding. And I would I would say finishing touch, but I'm sure they're not done. There'll be more things, no doubt. People are excited about it, but it, I, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, Everybody using the park, and uh, the mayor and I were there just the other day, and there was uh, a bunch of young people um, uh, playing and, and 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 enjoying it, and some sitting around, and it looked uh, it looked uh, great. It's, it's better than it's been in a long time, and and uh, congratulations to the Kobe family, and, and congratulations to the Lions. It's nice to see them continuing their good work. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Further comments, questions. I just like to jump in and uh, echo the deputy mayor's thoughts. Uh, I've, I've been fortunate to be uh, somewhat involved with a member of the Lions uh, uh, and uh, the enthusiasm uh, that we're so used to from our, our Lions groups in, in North Dundas and the Mountain District Lions uh, group, the club, uh, and their, uh, in this project, their efforts and their desire to be uh, continue being a strong um, a strong part of our community and especially in, in the mountain area. And I'm looking forward to uh, the lines being painted on the tennis courts. I'm looking to see some people play and uh, maybe I'll even do some stretching. Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by Councillor Annabelle. The council accepts the donation from the Mountain and District Lions Club of one park bench, two picnic tables, a sign and flowers for the newly constructed pavilion in the Rick Covey Memorial Park, and that council authorize and approve the pavilion to be named the Mount, uh, to, excuse me, to be named the Lions Club Pavilion. And that council authorize staff to work with the Mountain and District Lions Club to design and erect new signage stating such at 10543 South Mountain Main Street. All those in favor? Carried. Ms. Mirberg. 
budgetary pricing was approved for the repairs of our municipally owned ball diamond fences in 2021. Unfortunately, the condition of one of our ball fields, so, uh, Sox Field, has declined and the fence now requires an increased amount of work uh, at an increased cost of $4,500. Upon approval of the requested budget amendment, the Sox Field fence repairs will be completed and the corrugated plastic piping will be ordered and installed. And it's recommended that the $4,500 in additional fence repair costs um, be financed from the surplus uh, for the roof replacements for the Mountain Memorial Park. Questions, comments? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I look forward to seeing uh, this, this work completed, uh, seeing the fence back to where we'd all wish that it was, and, and, I, and I expect that uh, continuing going forward, we will uh, we will maintain it at that level and, and not have to so much worry about uh, the condition. And when we see the fencing or, or items like that at all of our parks, uh, we just uh, we 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 do our utmost to get it fixed and keep it up to the to the level that we would all expect. Uh, further questions, comments. Moved by Councillor Hoy, second by Councillor Thompson, that the Council of the Township of North Dundas approve budget amendment number 2021-04 for additional fence repair costs of up to $4,500 to Sox Field to be funded using remaining funds from the roof replacements in the Mountain Memorial Park. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you. Ms. Mirberg. So during the April 13th and 27th council meetings, council uh, directed staff to erect new signage in the Moorwood Veterans View Park and in the uh, South Mountain Community Park, which is now known as the Rick Covier Memorial Park. The new signs have been designed and are attached for council's review. And it's recommended that the purchase of the new park signs and miscellaneous materials uh, for these signs at a cost of up to $1,500 be financed from the surplus, uh, once again, from the Mount Memorial Park roofs. Thank you. Questions, comments? Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that the Council of the Township of North Dundas approve budget amendment number 2021-03 and that Council authorized Director of Recreation and Culture to purchase new park signs and miscellaneous materials for the Veterans View Park and Rick Covey Memorial Park at a cost of up to $1,500. All those in favor? Carried. Ms. Mirberg. So during maintenance of our refrigeration plant in the Winchester Arena, um, AC Mechanical, which is our contracted uh, refrigeration plant maintenance company, discovered that the valve on our brine filter had split. When changing the valve, um, there was indication that there was an ammonia leak in the brine line. This is meant, uh, sorry, this meant that one or more of the tubes in the isolated chiller was defective. So it was leaking or broken. The technician vacuumed out the ammonia out of the chiller and sealed the valves in order to prevent any ammonia from leaking into the brine line under the arena slab. Um, our current chiller has lasted 17 years and that is um, attributed to regular maintenance. So we have regular maintenance done at the beginning of the season, the middle of the season, and also at the, uh, the end of the ice season. Unfortunately, there's no way to repair the defective tubing inside of the steel chiller as the unit is welded and sealed together. So we were advised that the chiller would need to be replaced before the beginning of the upcoming ice season. We were notified that the equipment would take approximately 10 to 12 weeks to get in and the installation or replacement would take an additional uh, approximately two and a half weeks. Um, the total of 14 and a half weeks uh, from this council meeting would be September 5th, barring no setbacks. The first ice booking is tentatively scheduled for September 6th, pending this lab is not being used by the Eastern Ontario Health Unit at that time. There's three companies that deal with arena refrigeration systems. However, only two of those deal with ammonia plants, which is what we have in North Dundas. Both arenas, uh, sorry, arenas are ammonia plants. Um, so we went ahead and got quotes for the replacement system from the remaining two companies. 
and we received those, thoroughly reviewed them, and we are recommending that uh, we move forward with the project um, as soon as possible and award it to AC Mechanical Refrigeration Limited for the stipulated price of $72,450 plus HST, and that the project be funded um, partially from the so sixteen thousand five hundred from the surplus from the Mount Memorial Park roof replacements, and the remaining budget of up to ninety three thousand five hundred dollars from general working reserves. Uh, excuse me, sir. You're good, You're... Mr. Mayor. Thank you. My mute button was hidden from views. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll try not to do that more than three times tonight. Um, was there anything that uh, that Mr. Decker would need to add to that conversation, Ms. Mirberg? Um, Tom, is there anything that you wanted to uh, to chime in and add to that? Yeah, we got an indirect system, brine system. Uh, the ammonia pipes are or the brine pipes are surrounded by ammonia. It's a system that's welded. Could have been a defective weld. Who knows? You got 17 years out of a chiller that should have lasted 20. Um, this will give us time too, to also change some uh, piping around in the plant and uh, make it more efficient and. Uh, We'll get uh, new ammonia, and then we should be good for another 20 to 25 years. So that's all I have to offer. Well, thank you for that. Uh, any questions, comments from members of council? I think I asked the question. Move by Councilor Hannibal, second by Councilor Hoy, that the Council of the Township of North Dundas approve budget amendment number 2021-05 and that Council authorize the Director of Recreation and Culture to award the replacement of the Winchester Arena Chiller to AC Mechanical Refrigeration Limited for the stipulated price of $72,450.00 plus HST. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, Ms. Newberg. Chief Gruich. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. It's uh, this action request is from Fire, and it's the re recommendation that Council approve Policy 65216, the Driver Certification Program Training Policy, as amended and presented uh, May 25th of today. Uh, the background on this: the policy presented this evening has been circulated to the Fire Chief. Fire Chief Steering Committee and subsequently updated to include clarifications related to the training agreements, costs and, and deposit fees. It also specifies firefighter training recommendations to ensure that there are an adequate number of firefighters per station, possessing a DZ license and the process to review the potential candidates recommended for training. Uh, you'll see the options there. Uh, the financial analysis, uh, trading costs have been included in the 2021 budget. So uh, we're looking at, we get this action request uh, approved. Thank you, Chief. Um, questions, comments, and I'll, uh, I'll throw it right at the Deputy Mayor or Fire Commissioner, then he could add on to the lengthy process that we've gone through to get to this point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It has been a, a lengthy process, uh, not quite as as brief as uh, Chief Gruch put it, and, and it's very, it's, uh, it's nice of him to do so because it would be painstaking to the rest of the members to know just how long we discussed this and how many different options we did. But um, what I can add is that it was, uh, and I think Chief Gruch would, would second that, it was a thorough discussion over many different meetings. Um, as it evolved, more and more questions came up, but the one thing that was constant is that we do have an issue of having enough drivers for each of our stations. And uh, I think that the, with the CAO's help and, and, uh, and Chief Gruich and the steering committee that, that I think 
it's something that everyone is happy with that we, we didn't receive any comments unless Mike, you got some in the, in the interim of uh, uh, negative towards this policy. Now, I think we've, we've filled in all of the questions and, uh, and, and we're, we're quite happy and, and proud of the, uh, the resulting policy. And it will, uh, it will give a little latitude to the chiefs to, to um, promote and, and um, not reward, but to, to acknowledge the people that they feel, uh, especially in a, in a sort of a sliding scale in their, in their stations to, uh, to become drivers and, and to, to get a little broader training throughout it because um, at times, not right now, but at times, it would have perhaps been a little bit alarming to some people if they knew um, just how much we were holding it together with some band-aids and hope and uh, and everything else. And this this should alleviate that problem and, and just continue the proud history that North Dundas have for, has for its fire service. So uh, I, I certainly wholeheartedly endorse this policy. I know Chief Gruich is, is happy with it, so hopefully the council sees fit to, to endorse it as well. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, uh, questions, comments from other members of council? Seeing none. Moved by Councillor Annabel, second by Councillor Hoy, that council approved policy number 65-2016, a driver certification program training policy as amended and presented this 25th day of May, 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Our CAO, Ms. Rutley. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and hello, Council. So what you have in front of you tonight is, uh, I guess, my own personal Groundhog Day because I've brought this, this is the third time I've brought this report to Council in the last two months, so my apologies for that. Uh, the first one was just the regular approval. The second time, we added a couple of new student positions, and this time I've brought the part-time wage schedule before Council because it was brought to my attention that the trapper rate that was included was out of date, so we've updated that. And at the same time, we've also added the livestock valuer uh, rate of pay, which has never been included before, but should be to make the report uh, more comprehensive. So I would ask that council for the third time in a short period of time, uh, approve the updated part-time wage schedule. Thank you. Questions, comments from members of council? Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Annabel, that council approve the part-time wage schedule dated May 25th, 2021, and authorize that this schedule is to remain in effect until further notice. All those in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Madam CAO. Justine Plummer just finished an approximately six month contract as our municipal services assistant. And she has uh, agreed to take on the additional duties and become our senior municipal services assistant. We've offered her and she has accepted a five month contract in this position. She's already training on some of the new duties and doing a great job. So we are happy to have us have her continue with us in this new uh, role. Thank you. Questions, comments? Move by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Hoy. The council accepts the recommendation of the hiring committee and approves the hiring of Justine Plummer as senior municipal services assistant as per the offer of employment dated May 12, 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Um, we're going to move into key information, Ms. Mirberg. Yes, so I have an update uh, regarding the pools this summer and our recreation coordinator, Brandon Kuzno, is here with me as well tonight. Um, sorry, my first report is the update on the COVID vaccine uh, clinics, sorry. Um, so the health unit has facilitated COVID-19 vaccination clinics, which are currently being held on the slab in the Winchester arena. These clinics are going very, very well. Um, we definitely like to thank our local firefighters who have helped out at these events. We've had three firefighters attend each of the events recently using the squad truck to announce times when patrons can go in for their, uh, their vaccine. Heating units have been added for um, additional comfort levels. 
and a facility operator has been provided to help with regular cleaning, sanitizing, garbage collection, and attend to any needs that the volunteers or coordinators have. Additional dates have been scheduled for these vaccine clinics. Thank you, Ms. Mirberg. Questions, comments about the vaccine or the update, vaccine clinic or, clinic or the update. I do want to, uh, as we we're talking about firefighters and our fire service in North Dundas, I, I do want to uh, tout and uh, express uh, the gratitude uh, expressed to me by many uh, about the service offered in announcing the the times uh, scheduled times for people to uh, to go inside and to line up and uh, get ready to go and get vaccinated. It's well appreciated uh, when the firefighters go around the parking lot and make sure people know when to line up. Uh, it it it, uh, it minimizes the congregating that goes on and it, uh, it's an added level of comfort for people and uh, it's it, it truly. Uh, it's been expressed to me many times how uh, it's a well-run uh, operation at the uh, at the Winchester Arena, and they uh, they really do appreciate all the effort, especially that of the firefighters. Um, Ms. Mirberg, the pools. So, and um, yes, an update on our municipal pools. So our municipal pools are being tended to right now, in hopes that we can open both of them. Uh, 12 full staff were hired this summer instead of our typical 13. It was due to a decrease in the number of applications that we received this year. Um, since the time when these positions were approved, three of our lifeguards have found employment opportunities elsewhere, uh, but they have offered to be on our spare list. Only two of the remaining nine uh, full-time lifeguards are uh, fully certified, and this includes our pool coordinator, who is typically um, in the background uh, scheduling and organizing, um, uh, sorry, organizing uh, swims and registrations and, and such. Only two of the current seven uh, part-time lifeguards or spares are fully certified to teach and, and lifeguard. Um, due to the stay-at-home order that we're currently in, there are no scheduled recertification or certification courses right now. Um, the city of Cornwall has, um, uh, has offered to look into hosting a course and said at that point that they would be reaching out to the different municipalities, to the recreation and culture departments and letting us know when they would be offering this course in hopes that we could send our lifeguards to get recertified so that our pools could open. Um, in order to offer offer pool services this summer, we may need to look at decreasing our pool operating schedules in order to use one staff team at both pools on a part-time basis. So we are exploring options to, in order to open the pools. The other thing that we have explored is, as council I'm sure is aware, is getting maintenance parks laborers to do the active screening at the door and the sanitizing, cleaning, that kind of thing. Um, and also um, the maintenance parks laborers could potentially be used to open and close the pools in order to maximize the number of hours that lifeguards are actually on deck. A pool operating plan was drafted for this summer in, uh, in hopes that we would um, reopen or sorry, open the pools for the, the season um, and operate based on a red zone plan. However, um, we were advised that the color zones would no longer be implemented and the government is um, issuing a new plan, um, which comes out in phases. Um, so I just wanted to kind of provide council with, with those updates. Um, opening of the outdoor pools is uh, scheduled for stage one. Um, which uh, we should enter into on June 14th. So we're hopeful that we can get some sort of word on uh, when we can get our, some of our staff scheduled. And uh, hopefully at that time, we have an adequate number of staff to open our pools. Thank you, Ms. Mirberg. Questions, comments? Councillor Annabelle, then Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong following Councillor Annabelle. Well, uh, it's just nice to see that uh, Megan is continued planning and, and, and hope that the government allows the pools to be open. I think, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've about had enough of this and I'm sure 
kids and adults and getting out, it, it's important that we try to get the pools open if we can. That's all. Thank you, Councilor Annabelle. Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, just to echo uh, uh, Councilor Annabelle's thoughts and uh, and to uh, commend Ms. Mirberg and, and Brandon and, and their staff to, for the thoughts going forward uh, um, about opening the pools. And I, I would impress upon Ms. Mirberg and Mr. Cousineau that we need to do everything possible that is, that is offered out there if the city of Cornwall is... Uh, in an excellent manner and a very progressive group that council I commend them as well. But um, if they are offering any help they're offering that we can fast track certification, that if we can get people uh, to, to get our staff up to, up to par and up to the level that we need to be at so that we can open both pools, we need to move heaven and earth because the, the, uh, of all of us, uh, older people that are suffering a little bit and maybe getting a little sick of each other, uh, the kids are suffering as well and have been without their schooling, their, their social activities there, without uh, pool season, without even parks. Really, we need to do as much as we can for our youth, and the pools will be one major park. We're obviously going to do the work for the for the arenas, like uh, for the Winchester Arena that, that Ms. Mirberg has asked for. But um, I, I think I would impress upon you, you guys, I'm just one member of council, but I would say do not hesitate to come back if there's all a small bit of funding needed to get even to get people to Cornwall or however that's going to work for the pooling uh, for this for that for any of that training that's needed. Please come back inform us ask us uh, I certainly would be endorsing any of that that we can. I mean, you know, this last year and a half, two years has been an anomaly so to to maybe release some funds or to do something that we need to do to, again to fast track people to get them up to snuff so we can open our pools. Maybe we can even look at a little bit of extra staffing if it doesn't work out with the with the arena staff or with, or with the recreational staff. And we need more. I mean, we need to do everything we can for for our youth. So uh, please don't hesitate. Don't don't let any opportunities pass by. Either. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'm I'm sure your uh, your thoughts, your expressed thoughts and uh, comments are, are shared by all. Uh, and. Uh, and I will echo that and, and I will reiterate, uh, yes, uh, we need uh, to take full advantage of the opportunity uh, if Cornwall is able to support the recertifications of some of our uh, lifeguards and to ensure that our pools are uh, looked after in the proper fashion, that the uh, the people using the pools are looked after in a safe fashion. But uh, it, it, it would not serve the community well, it would not serve us well if we didn't uh, react in a positive fashion to the opportunity if it's presented to us by the city of Cornwall to ensure that we do everything possible. And we, oh, yes, it's, it needs, it needs to be uh, reiterated. And uh, I'm sure uh, the rest of the council, I, I, I can't vote for them, but uh, the deputy mayor's comments and my comment, I share that. And, uh, and, and, and to uh, Councillor Annabelle's comment, uh, we need to make sure that we, take full advantage of the opportunities. Um, thank you, Ms. Muirberg. Thank you. Um, before I get to the consent agenda, uh, any staff members have anything to add <clears throat> to the consent agenda? Um, okay, uh, we have some items in the consent agenda that I want to touch base on. Um, the City of Brantford had passed a resolution recently, and it was supported by the United Counties of SDG. The Deputy Mayor and myself uh, uh, <clears throat> supported that resolution. Excuse me. <clears throat> And it was a letter to the uh, the province, the premier, uh, concerning the uh, prohibition on golfing and outdoor activities. Um, we have a resolution that we were going to submit and submit a letter to the uh, province and to those to that to the prohibition on golfing and outdoor activities. Um, we won't be reading that that resolution. Um, those those prohibitions have already been lifted, but uh, just uh, I wanted to express that. Uh, the, the counties were in support and as us being part of the counties uh, we're we're in support of that uh, letter to the uh, to the premier well, I do have a resolution from the council of the township I do have a, a resolution about Elizabethtown Kitley and about emergency management 
in civil protection for 2021. And I think I'll ask uh, our clerk, uh, Ms. McCaslin, to speak to that. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to catch you off guard, Ms. McCausland, right. but nope. uh, it's about the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act and uh, the resolution from the Elizabethtown Kitley. I'm here, actually, so that's, that's just great. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, as you'll notice, if I could just go ahead for a moment, item D on uh, the consent agenda is um, a letter from the province, from the Solicitor General, which speaks to... Uh, the, uh, the fact that North Dundas was compliant for 2020 with regard to uh, our requirements uh, as it relates to the um, Emergency Management uh, Act uh, in Ontario. And commonly, as you all know in history, um, our, our efforts involve training and then they involve having a, a year-end exercise. Well, of course, in 2020, um, that wasn't... Uh, that wasn't possible, nor was it required by the province to do so. And what this motion going back to Elizabeth Town Kitley is uh, requesting that the province consider waiving um, the requirement uh, to, uh, to cancel the emergency exercise as a compulsory requirement uh, of Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act for 2021. So, uh, you know, as of course everything goes, we're, we're basing everything on day to day with what we can do and what we can't do, but it is very hard to get groups together to, uh, to exercise in, in the type of fashion that we have done in the past. Uh, so I would uh, request council if they see fit to, uh, to support this motion and we will send it to the Solicitor General. Thank you for that update, Ms. McCaslin. <clears throat> Questions, comments to that, uh, to Ms. McCaslin's update. Move by Councillor Annabelle, second by Councillor Hoy, that the Council of the Township of North Dundas hereby supports the resolution from the Township of Elizabethtown Kitley that calls for the cancellation of the emergency exercise as a compulsory requirement of the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act for 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, and I do want to uh, thank uh, Ms. McCaslin and uh, everyone on that committee for their efforts to ensure that we're compliant once again. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll read the resolution about the consent agenda, moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by Councillor Annabel, that, and that all other items listed under the consent agenda section of the agenda be approved as recommended. All those in favor? carried. Boards and committees, uh, County Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong, any update that you'd like to uh, give us? Well, uh, we have our upcoming meeting. Um, I think uh, the, the small bit of discussion that we've had, one of the, the, the highlights, I well, highlight, I guess, would be a a uh, different word, but the uh, one of the main discussions that we had was uh, was our our, uh, our uh, education committee, and and trying to find a rural solution to to uh, the situations with our with our schools. Uh, uh, Mayor Fraser sits on that committee. Um, we had changed it all, changed the, the makeup a little bit, uh, but we we have an excellent consultant, and uh, we're hoping to. Uh, to, to crack this very, very tough uh, Rubik's Cube of a question as to uh, how we can save, best use, give best direction to rural uh, education and, and all the logistics that are involved in that. Um, other than that, our meeting was relatively brief. There were a few in-camera things, which obviously can't be shared, but uh, uh, we're looking at some of the physical uh, the, Repairs or direction we could take with the, with the county building, uh, that'll be a long involved discussion. There's, um, you know, some some talk about the roads, and and uh, we had a fairly a fair discussion on uh, on our policies for for spraying noxious weeds and uh, and uh, 
the utilization of our uh, extra students that we hired this year and this, the, the difficulty in hiring some students. And, and uh, actually, in some of the cases, there are a few spots still available. Uh, so if you happen to know somebody, and, and by students, we, we mean as well college students and university students. There are some opportunities there to work in the roads department. Um, this has been a tough year for a lot of people. So there may be some people sitting out there. And by the way, when we talk about the counties um, for the roads, just to be clear with some people, uh, if, perhaps if somebody's listening and has a, an eligible teen or 20 year old, they don't have to get to Cornwall. They will be. They would be reporting to the station closest to where they it is that they would be hired uh, for. So you know, in 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 North Dundas's case, that would be if you were if you were a successful applicant. Um, depending on the numbers, how we are right now, I don't know exactly how it sits this week. But you would, for instance, you would you would uh, report to Winchester Springs. So don't don't think just because we talk counties or when we talk about counties hiring, it's just the Cornwall area. Um, it, it, it also includes North and South on that. So I would hope that people, uh, anybody listening, it, it, it's never too late. Get your, get your name in there now. Uh, other than that, Mr. Mayor, I'd hand it back to you for any other highlights you think that I've missed. No, uh, uh, thank you for that. I think you you, you covered it all. And uh, just uh, to the uh, Rural Schools Initiative, uh, just um, a comment to those uh, that uh, are, are are online with us or are watching us. Um, this initiative is uh, well supported by all members of uh, SDG Council, by the County's Council. And uh, the effort is to ensure that the quality of education in our area, SDG, but all rural areas is of a high level, is of a level that would be ex uh, expected in urban areas. Um, there's a strong feeling that uh, we're underserved. Uh, and uh, as, as often mentioned uh, by us in Eastern Ontario, uh, sometimes we seem to be forgotten by the province and uh, the education system um, there seem to be some failings and there, there are some opportunities to uh, offer um, a, a quality, uh, a level of quality that is uh, equaled uh, throughout Ontario. And this is what we're striving towards. And uh, we'll be having a meeting again very shortly. And uh, as we gather our thoughts and we prepare our, uh, our plan forward. But uh, I think you covered everything very well. Thank you. Um, Ken, today I had a chance to speak to uh, one of the representatives from the uh, Mountain and District Lions Club, one of the organizers of the Canada Day uh, festivities, and because of the pandemic, because of the lockdown, because of the uncertainty of what's going to happen in the in the sh near future, um, they're not they're not making any plans. They don't want to get anyone's hopes up, uh, but they are very mindful of of the need to uh, to do what they can when they can, and uh, that's the latest I have from them. I spoke to uh, that member yesterday two to two or three days ago anyway and uh, we're just looking forward to further direction from the province as we open things up and, uh, and we're all hoping that we can get together shortly the display of lights no update from me and the fire chief steering committee deputy mayor we will be having an upcoming meeting in in, in the next little while but we haven't had a meeting there's been as everybody knows, when we went into the other lockdown, there's been some more challenges. So uh, we've, we've, with with the conjunction working with the CA, our CAO has done a, a, an excellent job with communication and, and helping make sure that everybody understands the restrictions that we are under. We've been sort of concentrating on, on ongoing training for the, the rookies at least, and so that we, we can remain up to snuff as we, as we always are. But uh, we haven't gotten together as, as a group of chiefs yet. It will be in the near future. I will update you on that. Thank you. Art in the Waterfront, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, there uh, hasn't been any meetings lately, but there is going to be one uh, coming shortly. Uh, right now, the only thing that's really being planned is the movie night in conjunction with the uh, Chesterall Agricultural Society. Uh, they're looking at August 13th or 14th, mid-August, uh, uh, having the event at the fairgrounds in Chesterville. Uh, there is funding in place for it, and the uh, Fair Board and Art on the Waterfront are, are both in favor of, uh, of working on it. 
uh, just waiting on approvals from Eastern Ontario Health Unit. Uh, if there is approvals for it, then they've just got to work out the uh, work out the plans for it. But they're hoping to be able to put something together, depending on uh, on restrictions. Thank you for that update, uh, Dairy Fest Councillor Hoy. Uh, anything at all different? Uh, nope, no update. That's understandable. Winchester Downtown Revitalization Councillor Annabel. Uh, we haven't had a meeting per se, but uh, back in January, we ordered new flags for all the poles in the village. There were about 75 flags that we ordered. Owen and Vince and I went up a couple of weeks ago to slip them on the hardware, and they forgot to put the pockets for the rods. We've dealt with the same company and the same salesman for a few years now, and there was a fluke. So we've sent them back, hoping we can get the pockets put on so we can get them up shortly. Thank you. And uh, whenever uh, you speak of that, it makes me think of um, the, uh, the, the signage that was on the side of the Cheshwell Community Centre, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the efforts of, uh, of a Cheshwell resident, uh, Mr. Cross. Uh, he uh, worked in conjunction with the Rotary Club and he was able to get the Merry Christmas sign down. And to all those that uh, are, uh, are with us tonight, and uh, there's a commitment that we have with the Rotary Club. We will be uh, getting together. Uh, the plan was we were going to get together, but the lockdown and everything else got in the way. It's a poor excuse, but it's one that's used often. Uh, but we will be formalizing uh, a schedule so that uh, uh, signs aren't uh, left up or, or uh, do winter displays aren't left uh, up uh, longer than they need be. So, uh, but anyway, I want to thank uh, the efforts of uh, Mr. Cross. Uh, it's truly appreciated. Appreciate it. Uh, motions, notices of motions, petitions, council comments and concerns. Uh, at this point, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow councillors, I, I, I want to uh, speak about um, uh, uh, a Ronson Road project. And I believe uh, the deputy mayor will speak about something after we get through what I'm going to talk about. Does that sound fair enough? Um, the Ronson Road, um, it's, it's uh, what I speak of, um, I guess the background is, it's uh, Ronson Road, as many know, it's uh, essentially a dead end road going from Sim Street traveling west to uh, the unmaintained road allowance. It's essentially um, uh, the only people on it. The only, it's not a commuter road, let me say that. And there are some issues with it. Uh, un, unmarked, unsigned roads with re, uh, without regulatory speed signs are deemed to be uh, 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, on this, on Ronson Road, uh, there are concerns, uh, well-founded concerns for uh, school-aged children exiting a bus and having to walk home. The school bus that travels Ronson Road from Sim Street West, as I said, uh, does not have an opportunity to go the whole length and turn around, uh, being it uh, as it is a dead end. There's no opportunity for that, so they have to take advantage of a, of a turnaround part way down the road, which uh, means uh, school age children, uh, parents uh, and youngsters that could go with the parents are walking down uh, <clears throat> Ronson Road, which is unsigned and therefore 80 kilometers an hour. Um, I, I feel that's unsafe. And um, I think that's an issue that we need to address. And I'm looking, um, this resolution will speak to uh, this pilot project of lowering, of directing our director of uh, um, public works to lower the speed limit to post it uh, to take it from 80 kilometers uh, per hour down to 60 kilometers per hour that this is something I've spoken about before uh, we've all heard uh, some of the issues on Ronson Road so this is not uh, news to all of us but uh, we're going to formalize it I hope we're going to formalize it tonight so to the resolution I'm looking for a mover and a seconder Deputy Mayor Armstrong and Councillor Thompson, 
moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Whereas Council and staff have received complaints from residents about excessive speeding on Ronson Road, and whereas Ronson Road is a populated residential road with many children traveling on school buses, and whereas Ronson Road is a dead end road, therefore school buses are not able to turn around at the end of the road, and whereas children are being dropped off from the school bus to walk home, and whereas the safety of res residents is of the utmost importance to Council. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council that council authorized that a pilot project be conducted to reduce the speed from 80 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour and hereby direct the director of public works to post 60 kilometer per hour speed regulatory signs on Ronson Road. All those in favor. Carried. Deputy Mayor. It, just to, before I get into what I was going to talk about, if I just may, Mr. Mayor as well, uh, not only supporting that that uh, project, but I, I stress that we need to make sure that staff is uh, gets that uh, information up on the website ASAP, and that we use all possible uh, uh, methods of, of passing that information out to uh, to get the explanation and to to make sure that that information is passed on to the residents and that nobody is surprised for it or to to ease sort of the break in process uh, that that is always sort of required when we. Uh, whenever we make changes such as this, because they're not very often. And so we, we need to be fair with the whole of people. So, uh, again, I would stress that staff get the, whoever it is that's going to be responsible for that, get it, get the information there as soon as possible, meaning like by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the thing I want to bring up to council, you know, we've been talking about this for a few years now and, and uh, it's close to fruition. The, the CAO and myself have been working just to, even today on the, uh, Finalizing the the uh, the, the uh, template for, for the job description for the communications officer, and uh, I, I wasn't able to get back in time to to finalize a meeting with the with the CAO this evening. So uh, I'm I'm just sort of letting council know that I would hope and see if perhaps Mr. Mayor, if you could uh, allow the possibility, or just see if council would be accepting to think about. Um, Perhaps in the next few days, we may be able to finalize this. And I, I, I would certainly intend to want it to be discussed uh, at our next meeting. But if possible, um, we could explore the possibility of just, uh, if, if, if through you, Mr. Mayor, if the CAO and I can, I can finalize this, this document and perhaps send it around in an email before the next meeting and, uh, and see if we can find a consensus or get some comments if there's, there's multiple comments uh, uh, and tweaking that wants to be done. Uh, by all means, I, I, I would be fine with waiting until the next meeting, but it seems to be a consensus. Perhaps we could authorize the mayor and the CAO to go ahead and, and, and um, publicize the, the job description and see if we could start the hiring process ASAP because I'm optimistic, uh, like I'm sure everybody else is, that we would be close to reopening in some larger fashion. And uh, I would like us to be ready with this position to tell the story of North Dundas and to start to get some, some good news out there and, and, and sharing as much information as possible because there will be a lot of changes when we do go back to some, whatever nor the new normal life is gonna be. So I would like to mitigate every possible delay that we could. Uh, I'm not sure, I, and I apologize, Mr. Mayor, and bring this part up to you, but I, I'm wondering what your thoughts and the rest of council are if we were to try and proceed in that manner. If not, the next meeting is fine. I personally would like to speak. Thank you for your thoughts and your comments. And I know we do need to uh, move this along uh, in, in light of the, we all hope the imminent uh, reopening or the, the, the opening uh, somewhat of, of uh, easing some of the restrictions and we need to uh, promote what is going on in North Dundas. We need to have that opportunity. We need to get this mechanism in place. Uh, as for um, the actual legal process, uh, Deputy Mayor, um, um, I'm sure our clerk will advise us if uh, you know if a special meeting is needed to firm that up in the in the in the you know in the short term. If we can't do it by email, if email works, I'm supportive of that. Uh, but I just uh, I just want to make sure that we get this right and uh, that uh, we don't uh, ruffle uh, unnecessary ruffle the province's feathers for uh, you know uh, announcing something or uh, uh, making uh, uh, agreeing to a resolution. But um, 
but we, I do want to move this as quickly as possible. And if, uh, if uh, like I said, if the email works, if that doesn't work, then a special meeting uh, as as soon as possible. Definitely before the next meeting, I would like to see this this put to bed well before the next meeting of, of council, which would be, uh, since I'm going to take advantage of that, I'm going to look at the calendar just to make that announcement, um, which is Wednesday, June 9th, and there's a public meeting at 6.30 p.m. So I'd like to get this done um, before before the next meeting. Uh, I hope that's, uh, that's uh, amenable to you and to other members of council. Uh, comments from other members of council about, uh, and I see the uh, CAO has jumped in, but Councillor Thompson. No, I just agree. If we can uh, get the job description sent out, uh, so everyone can take a look at it. But if we, the sooner we can get this going, the better. It's uh, it's been on the go for a while, so definitely before the next meeting. And like you said, uh, Mr. Mayor, we'll just check and see uh, which process we have to do. If it's a uh, call a special meeting, or if we can do uh, uh, just consent uh, through an email. But uh, whatever whatever works out to expedite it. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Further uh, comments from members of council? Uh, seeing that, uh, Madam CAO, I see you're with us. Yes, thank you. Um, I would suggest that we would need to have a special meeting to get a decision on it, unless the one, um, I guess, thing that I could get clarification on, in terms of the job description, I think Council has already looked at the job description that the deputy mayor provided. So unless there's comments to change that, if you've all agreed to that as a job description, that's okay. The only thing that I would ask for clarification on is um, the time that you're asking for. And Mr. Deputy Mayor, perhaps you can remind me, I believe it was 20 hours a week for a year contract, is that what you had proposed? Yeah, it's based on a thousand hours. So I'm proposing over 50 weeks, um, you know, a, a maximum of 20 hours a week, uh, somewhat flexibility, uh, flexible as we had discussed uh, all of those things. And, and if we're gonna go with the original one, then, then I'm fine with that. There were a few tweaks that I think you uh, rightly put in there, but I think you and I need to have a little further discussion on, on some of it, but if we're based on that, I would like to see some of the things that you that, that maybe previous to without without boring everybody with it and not to not to be secretive, but you know there were some things that, that you and I were discussing back and forth. There are a couple of things that I think certainly fit, and there are a few other things that, that like I said, I perhaps would have the discussion with you. But uh, clearly, I'm okay with the job description that I wrote, but uh, but, but that doesn't mean that it's a, as I said when I brought it. It doesn't mean it's a completed document it's just my thoughts on it but uh yeah you know if, we, if everybody's still okay with that I, I do think you deserve uh another conversation and we could perhaps probably finalize and come to uh, our fine put our final thoughts together even by tomorrow or the next day and put it out to council but yeah i still do to, to put it out there since you asked me i still do believe it should be contract position at this point in time and uh, that we can move forward um you know but yeah, we, I'm ready to discuss it and move it anytime, really. Because where I was kind of going with this is because we can't go with an email consensus. If we have consensus here in this meeting, that as long as it stayed generally to what had already been presented to council in the deputy mayor's job description, we can just tweak the job description. The biggest thing was to understand that this is going to be a part-time 20 hours per week, approximately the thousand hours overall as opposed to a full-time, then we can go ahead and make those changes and present the final um, job description to council, but we could go ahead and advertise without needing consensus. We're getting it right now in an open meeting. That would be sort of, in my opinion, the proper way, unless the clerk has something different to say with that. Uh, Madam Clerk. I'm good with that. That's good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for um, the information, uh, Ms. Rutley and uh, Ms. McCaslin. Do we have consensus to the job description that we've all had an opportunity to to uh, to look at, to offer comments to, to contribute to? And uh, uh, I saw Councillor Thompson's hand up, or did I see Councillor yeah. Hoy? Councillor Thompson, do it's we have just consensus? Out of, like, a, like our last meeting, I uh, I think the job description was good, and then when we add in for the uh, the contract position. And uh, do it for the do it for a year. Uh, see if it, uh, it 
if at the end of the at one year, if it works out the way we're hoping, uh, then it can be uh, it can be redone for another year or whatever term. But uh, to do a contract position for the first year, I think the description we had was uh, was good. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Hoy. Sorry, no, I'm uh, good with the way it's presented to for now and see how it goes. And if we need to tweak it for another year, we'll tweak it then or let's just get it moved forward and get something to go. Thank you. Councillor Annabel. I'm fine with what uh, Deputy Mayor put forth for job description. I, I naturally assume that, that uh, Angela or CAO would be putting some administrative uh, fine tuning to that, and I'm, I'm good to go with how it is. Deputy Mayor. Uh, I generally agree with myself, yes. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, just want I you think you have I the think... opportunity to agree with yourself, that's all. Uh, you know, you know me well enough. I also argue with myself a lot too. So it is a fair question. Um, yeah, I think we could we could probably send something. Well, I, I could almost guarantee that we could send something out by the end of the week just to let everybody know sort of what the final offering is. But yeah, and then just to be clear, I was uh, when I was talking about the consensus, I, I sort of misspoke. I sort of meant exactly what the what the CAO was saying. Just just to, in agreement. If we had to wait till the following meeting, but if we could just get agreement that this is what we're going to do, we could have that done by. 705 and be able to publicize it but this is even better to be able to publicize it because i'm assuming you know there are some challenges towards hiring at this point in time and, and the process of doing it so so it gives us a, it gives us a couple of weeks head start because it's not that long until our next meeting so i, I mean i look forward to that. I, I hope that we have like the lifeguards and everything else i i hope we have everything possible that we can in place as soon as the gates start to open up a little bit this is this is a key card this has been a uh, a wish of mine for quite a while, and I know you shared in it, Mr. Mayor. So uh, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to get this done. Thank you. Okay, you're starting to fade out, but I'm thinking you said you were you you were in agreement to it. So I'll go with that. Uh, so we have our direction, uh, 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 Madam CEO, Madam Clerk, and I hope that's uh, satisfactory for both of you. Good. And uh, thank you for all your efforts on that, uh, Deputy Mayor, and uh, to our CAO for your efforts in, uh, in ensuring this gets done smoothly. Do I have any other comments from Council? Unfinished business, none, ratification bylaw. We're going to move into that. Move by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that bylaw number 2021-39 to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed this 25th day of May 2021. All those in favour? Carried. Move by Councillor Annabel, seconded by Councillor Hoy, that council adjourn at 8.02 p.m. to the call of the chair. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much, fellow councillors, staff, and for all of those uh, out there that uh, followed along with us this evening. All the best until next time. Take care.